Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. And before we get started, if you guys want to catch some Minecraft that I'll be playing with my friends Charlie and Corey, grab a few beers, come join us over on the second channel, X2, at about 9 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Anyway, today I wanted to quickly rant about ground battles in the Star Wars universe. And I've got this series where I get a little too analytical and pick apart some elements of Star Wars combat. So so if you don't like those videos, you won't like this one, maybe just click off. We're all nerds here, this will get nerdy, and yeah, I probably will overanalyze a series ultimately made for children, but personally, I find it fun, and I think a lot of people do too. And the key here is that we're not evaluating how much sense something makes based on real-world military tactics or science, rather, we're seeing whether elements of the Star Wars universe are internally consistent. So today we'll be talking about ground battles. And and I love ground battles in the Star Wars universe. The Battle of Geonosis from Episode 2 was actually one of my favorite bits of Star Wars media growing up. I would skip the rest of the movie and just watch that. However, that battle, along with most, perhaps with the exception of the Battle of Hoth, really lacks something that would make sense, and that something is orbital bombardment. We know from games like Knights of the Old Republic and plenty of pieces of Star Wars expanded universe content that capital ships in orbit are more than capable of bombarding the surface of a planet. Not only can they, say, melt an entire city or even the entire surface of a planet, but as we see in Book 2 of the Thrawn trilogy, Star Destroyers and other ships of that size can actually target pinpoint areas and destroy them. Thrawn uses it on one occasion to cause a massive fire or even to boil seas away to try to expose a submarine to damage. However, the general tactics of orbital bombardment are almost never used to their full potential. Probably the best example of this is actually the Battle of Geonosis. There were major droid factories and CIS strongholds on that planet that needed to be destroyed. There were Confederate core ships that needed to be taken out, and the Republic did so by landing artillery and troops, moving up to the targets and taking them out on the ground. And I mean that does work in certain situations, but one of the unique things about the Battle of Geonosis was that the Republic had total air superiority. We know from both the films and largely the expanded universe that the Republic was able to wipe past the few separatist ships that were there. However, instead of leaving their capital ships in space, the acclimators instead went to ground to dislodge troops. Now, certainly some of the acclimators did need to go to the planet's surface. They had to rescue the Jedi, for example. However, with total air superiority, you can also pinpoint targets and destroy destroy them from extreme range with the ground forces having little to no ability to resist. Perhaps Geonosis had some ground-based cannons or something that made this more difficult, but this is just one example of how orbital bombardment is not used to its full extent. There are probably hundreds of more examples of this happening, orbital bombardment not being used in a case where it could have changed the tide of battle without actually having to risk the lives of your soldiers or your equipment. Now, sometimes there's a rationale that explains this away. For example, when it comes to the New Republic, they generally did not engage in in orbital bombardment, at least until the Yuuzhan Vong War, because it was seen as far, far too aggressive, too imperial. And that does make sense, especially where, unlike the Empire, the New Republic wasn't really willing to throw away entire populations or planets. Once the Vong invade, however, they became desperate and did start to employ the method. So that does make sense. However, in most of the battles I'll be talking about here, it's not the Republic, but rather the Confederacy or the Empire. Another thing that stops bombardment can be the presence of ground-based defenses, but especially planetary shields. And this is why I mentioned that the Battle of Hoth does make some sense. Because Ozl comes out of light speed too close to the planet, Hoth is able to raise its shield, and Death Squadron is forced to land troops outside and walk in underneath it, presumably because the shield is somewhat like an umbrella. If they had managed to get to the planet without alerting the rebels, their plan probably would have been to target the shield generators and the cannons from space, then establish a blockade, and if they're trying to get survivors, then to send troops down. If they're just trying to wipe out the alliance, then they can easily just do so from space. The problem is that many big ground battles actually take place when there's no orbital shield, and the planet Yavin 
which did not have such device, actually provides some good examples of this. First of all, we have the Imperial Invasion of Yavin, after the destruction of the Death Star. And this one's interesting. Basically, the Alliance held off at Yavin until the Empire created the Executor Class Super Star Destroyer. And if you want to know the reasons why it took so long, well, I've done a whole video about that. Anyway, eventually the Empire managed to establish a blockade around the planet. However, instead of just bombing the defenseless rebels from orbit, which they certainly would have had the capacity to do, they instead sent down bombers and other fighters to try to take out the rebel base from the air. And that is partially because it did appear in a video game, but just looking at things from a logical perspective, the Empire has an unassailable tool in this fight which they did not use. Natasi Dalla would make some of the same mistakes when she tried to invade Yavin, now home to Luke's Jedi Praxium, after the Battle of Endor. She actually did use orbital bombardments somewhat, however she did so in conjunction with the ground invasion, which I personally think was foolish. Dalla in this example also had a full Super Star Destroyer, she had total superiority when it came to space, and realistically the New Republic would not have been able to muster reinforcements to help push her out of her position. And in fact, she is only defeated largely because someone on the ground manages to steal a TIE Bomber and sneak it into the SSD. Let's look now to the Clone Wars, and I think there's one example here that's better than perhaps any other. That is the attack on Dathomir. The Dathomiri have magic, sure, but they don't have any ground-based defenses, they don't have any capital ships, and they certainly do not have a planetary shield. Grievous decides that it would be a good idea to actually land on the planet and try to fight these literal witches in direct combat. Now, it doesn't go too poorly for him, however, a much better tactic would have been to send down some spy droids, try to find out the exact location of the Enclave, if you don't already know where it is, and then just bomb it mercilessly from orbit. Anyway, there are a ton of examples, and when you read the Star Wars Expanded Universe, just think about some of the major battles, which faction effectively controls space, and whether turbo laser fire from space could actually make things easier. They work really well not only when one faction has total control of space, but also if the enemy is really, really dumb in, or if a ground invasion is just generally not practical or preferable. For example, on Felucia, where the CIS were dug in and the terrain was unfriendly, to put it mildly. If you're a bad guy faction, then really there's no example of when this can't work, especially if you're looking to cause fear and havoc. For example, Jason Solo's bombing of Kashyyyk as Darth Kydus is one of the most terrifying examples of orbital bombardment. It really shows how terrifying and demoralizing the tactic can be. I mean, he essentially causes the whole planet to catch fire with a few well-placed shots. However, you also should think about examples where bombing might not work. For example, if you're a good guy faction and there are civilians, you probably don't want to bomb the crap out of them. Maybe the Republic, for example, did not want to do something so violent at the beginning of the Clone Wars, or they wanted to capture the Separatist leadership, which is why they didn't bomb Geonosis. It's also possible that there's no intel on an enemy and bombing just wouldn't be effective, Although I think in that situation, one good strategy might be to get probe droids or even bodies if necessary to the ground. There's also cases like Crate, where the enemy is so dug in that even with total space superiority, bombing won't be effective. Sometimes too, an enemy presence in space will be too strong, and in that case, your best chance for defeating them on the ground is to slip transports or other ships down while the big ships engage each other. And that I suppose would also preclude getting any sort of guns to the ground. Finally, we have the issues that I already mentioned, including the presence of ground-based defenses, especially shields. But I'm curious, am I overstating the effectiveness of orbital bombardments? Is there a specific battle in the Clone Wars that you think could have used a good bombing? Is there a reason, besides aesthetics and drama, why military leaders seem to prefer to send starfighters down to do direct precision bombing rather than shooting from the space? And most importantly, am I wrong in saying that Emperor Palpatine should have ordered one of the CIS capital ships to just accidentally blow up the Jedi Temple when fighting over Coruscant? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments. But until next time guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, again Drunk Minecraft over on my second channel X2, link in the description up in the upper right hand corner. See some of you then, but if not, have a great one and may the force be with you.